Is today your birthday? Yeah. Oh, wow. All right. I know. I know. I'm 38, living my best 38 life. I only say that because I had to ask Brett how old I was. Welcome into the harvest friends. This podcast is dedicated to helping you be a disciple and make disciples in the 21st century. And my name is Andrew Stroud. I am the project lead for into the harvest. And I'm joined today by Abigail with uh, Wilson, our chief editor over at our blog. Hello, Abby. Hi. <laughs> now this is a big day for you. I'm going to put you on the spot because today oh is your birthday. I mean, by the time this podcast comes out, um, right. It'll be a few days past your birthday, but yes. today it'll we're be recording. Thanksgiving. Yeah. It'll be Thanksgiving. So folks, if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to tell Abigail happy birthday, <laughs> then this is a great opportunity for you to do that. Yeah. And usually it has, it falls on Thanksgiving every few years. So, you know, I'm very used to that. So yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Sharing my well, birthday. The last few weeks we've, uh, we've tried to touch on the, our website and the blog. And this week, Abigail, we've got an article on worship over there at the blog that we hope people will check out. Yes. And you wrote it. Um, <laughs> I, we actually talked about worship here on the podcast and right. it was a really great conversation. It kind of came after you guys there in San Diego had done a study on worship Mm -hmm. I think the thing that I loved about you writing this article after our conversation and then after that study is that you were really able to have some really great nuggets. Um, if people mm -hmm. haven't checked that out, I think you really were able to summarize into some great takeaways that have, have really stuck with me. So I was, I really yeah. loved that about it. Do you have anything you want to add for people? Well, only that that's really encouraging to me. So friends, you might not know this, but Abigail is a writer. She's an author. She's actually got a book on amazon.com that you guys ought to check out, but she, you know, you've helped me a lot with my writing over the past few years. Um, so that's very encouraging to me. It was the goal when I did the article, I wanted to try to highlight and drill down so that folks could have an idea of the principles of worship, mm -hmm. but also some, some basic practices of worship that, um, that you could actually begin to live out in a very um, you know, practical way. So hopefully that is uh, something that people can, can benefit from and would love for them to check that out over at the, uh, the website. Yeah, I really think if you are in ministry, this is one of those articles that you can put a little bookmark on and really resource it out. It's, uh, it's got really great takeaways um, and just some of those, like, like I said, sentences that stick with you as great definitions, as great little cornerstones as we mm. work through these things. So if you haven't already, go check that out. If you have already read it, maybe go back and bookmark it because you'll probably need it. <laughs> yeah. And feel free to share it with others. Um, yeah. that, that's one of the things that coming out of that study, I do believe that the Lord taught me some things that were super helpful. And I do think that he helped me put those things in writing. So the more people can benefit from that, that resource, then the better. So hopefully if it helps you yes. share it on social media with others. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, we have a listener question. <laughs> we do. Let's just dive right in. Okay. All right. So our listener question today comes from actually several people. In fact, I think when I went back, it came from about five people. I won't call them out here, but um, all of these people came to me and said, Hey, Abigail, what's going on with Andrew's hair? So I... With each one of those people, I was like, um, Andrew and I don't have that kind of relationship. We don't just <laughs> chat about his hair. Like, I don't know what you're thinking. Um, until finally, like the fifth person, I just kind of broke a little on the inside. And in one of our meetings, I was like, hey, Andrew, what's going on with your hair? So we felt like enough of you came to me for whatever reason right. um, that we should just go ahead and address it here, Andrew. Um, so first off, before we you tell us, the real mm -hmm. reason that you have been slowly growing out your hair this year. Um, I just want to like, maybe ask a few things because I had some people say like, is Andrew um, doing a, a vow 
of like a, a Nazarene type vow situation. I think that's right. It's the Nazarene vow. Yeah, Nazarene, yeah. Uh, Nazarite. I think Nazarite it, it, vow. Both are used. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they were like curious. So is it that? Yeah, you shared this with me before, and I wish it was something so spiritual, but no, there's no, there's no vow associated oh, man. with okay. me not cutting my hair. Is it like a Samson situation? I mean, are we going to like, are you just going to rip Am I getting some stronger? Walls? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, not that I've noticed anyways. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't think so. I actually need to, I actually need to be getting in better shape, but no, I don't think it's helping me get uh, stronger, at least not that I've noticed. All right. Yeah, no, I think this is hilarious. Of course, we changed up the format of the show. I can't remember if it was just this year or late last, but we wanted to have listener questions as part of what we discuss mm -hmm. on a regular basis. And so I promise some of you have asked some really important, deep questions yes. that we've got queued up. We are going to get to those. Yeah, but... don't worry. We didn't forget you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the last show of this season. We'll still have some shows coming out over the holiday, but this is the last official show of season four. And apparently several people have asked you, Abigail, so yeah. I thought it would be fun just to uh, to talk about this a little bit. Interestingly, <laughs> no one has asked me. Directly. I know, that's the weird thing. Yeah. It, it, yeah. And this is the, I guess this is just one of the realities of doing a show that's also a video uh, that we also mm -hmm. put out on video is that people they do begin to see that uh, what know, we look like th things are changing. Believe me, I think about it because I'm like, oh gosh, I've got a show today. I guess I should look decent. I want to yeah. just say before you give the answer that yeah. um, I really appreciated it because it's taken the focus away from me because <laughs> I don't remember when we started doing YouTube, but almost immediately I started getting mm. unsolicited comments from oh. Yeah. And really? it's usually very positive, but uh -huh. yeah, my friends would be like, man, like Bravo. I go, we can tell you really brushed your hair this week. And I was, I took that as like super support, but I, I remember sort of mentioning it to Keith at the time. I mean, like, you know, do your friends comment like about the show and a, a, guess what guys apparently don't no. do that. And Got, so, no. um, <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of took the thing. pressure off. So thanks. Thanks You're for welcome. having something interesting going on on your side <laughs> so that people. <laughs> no, you are, you are welcome. No, guys don't, I don't think guys think that way at all. No, Certainly they, they don't. don't talk to each other about it. No. Uh, and you're right. It's not something that we've talked about. I, I'm not even sure that you really noticed it. Um, I didn't. Cause I'm so yeah. unobservant, right. like the worst you could like get glasses and, <laughs> and dye your hair and it would take I would notice eventually, like right. give me a couple of weeks and I would be like, something's different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we, both of us have been associated with the military community for years. So I've always kept my hair pretty short. Yeah. Uh, plus just as a guy, um, it, it's definitely a lot easier to have short hair. You just sort of wake up and move it around a little bit and, and it's pretty much done. Um, but this is a serious topic. I know that, um, your husband, Brett, has said, how did he put it? You were going to have to step down or step off the team? Yeah, he said he wasn't going to be supportive of me being a part of Into the Harvest if you decided to do a man bun. So if I, like, he's and a, cool and a man if bun you, is like, if you actually do it like, mm -hmm. like up, right? So yeah, and like put it in a little bun. I, so, I think it's the whole like imagining you like finessing your hair. <laughs> it was just like too much for him to handle. And it just right. felt like he wasn't going to be able to support us any longer. So that's you, when, that's when I came to you. That's when I was right. like, Andrew, this is serious. <laughs> Feel free to grow this. it as long as you want. Just don't. Put it yeah. 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 <laughs> well, just you saying the words, Brett, imagining me finessing my hair <laughs> makes me feel awkward. <laughs> so no, he definitely yes. didn't say any of that. I just made right, that right, up. Right. <laughs> right. Well, so this is going to be the longest lead up to the shortest answer ever. Okay, guys. we're but, here. But at least you'll know. Uh, I really just decided I was not going to cut my hair in 2021. <laughs> there and it is, that's, guys. And that's, that's the about answer. the extent of it. Like I've I've never grown my hair out. Um, so maybe my my uncle teased me that I'm having a mini midlife crisis. Which hey, if I am midlife at 48, then I feel pretty great about that. Yeah. Maybe, um, I mean, know, it's I've been got... a big year. We're going to get into that right now in just a second. 
it, but you've had a lot of very exciting things happen in your family. And yes, so maybe you just needed to have some control over something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there was really nothing more to it. I, I would say part of my personality is I like to try new things. Yeah. And so yeah, I just decided, do. hey, I'm not going to cut my hair this year and just see what that's like. So you said you I've been it. I've been growing it out. I forget how you worded it, but I've been growing it out quickly. I really, I've just been growing it out. Um, yeah. it, it grows at a certain pace and I, guess I can't so. speed that up or slow it down. So are you going to cut it? Or are you just going to let that's, it keep going? I have not decided, but I'm definitely not going to cut it before January 1st of 2022. Well, sure. So, you, you've made a, you've made a little yes, goal. All a right. Little goal. Well, so there you I guess go, we'll listeners. See. You Tune ask to season and we five. answer. <laughs> season five, maybe I'll have short hair or maybe a man bun. Oh, we'll see. Well, if you want the show to continue, then. <laughs> okay. But, but it, this is a point of, of order. If okay. I have a ponytail, is that not a man bun? Like if the, if, if the hair is pulled back yeah. in the back, because the man bun is on top, I think. I think, I think. so. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I think this Clarify is, that we've, already, we've already talked about it more than Brett has thought about it. So um, <laughs> we'll ask him, he'll come up with something. I'll let you know um, yeah. what your parameters are right. yeah. for, for this to keep going. We, I have to we absolutely have to have husband. you on the team. Yeah. And so. I really have to be, you know, submissive in that way. So... <laughs> <laughs> All yes. right. Well, thanks, Andrew. Thanks for being vulnerable with our audience. Um, and thanks to all those people that came to me with that question. It was, it did give me pause. So thank you so much. And for all the rest of you who had true questions for us. Thank you for sending in real questions. We promise to bring you real answers in season five. So keep sending us questions at info at into the harvest.org or leave us comments on our YouTube or on our podcast and we'll get to them. We promise. Yeah. And I want to hear from people. I want to hear comments. Should I cut the hair or should I not? Uh, oh, does yeah. it look lame long? I need to go back to the shorter do. Um, I am not uh, easily offended. So yeah, put it on the YouTube comments, put it on our, our Instagram yeah. post. Let's talk about Andrew's appearance. Yeah. Should I cut on. it or should I not? Okay, great. Abigail, our main topic today is Thanksgiving. This show is going to come out on Thanksgiving Day. And it's something we've done the last few years as we approach the end of the year. I think it's just a great practice, but the show gives us the opportunity to do a year in review in our personal lives and where we've seen God's faithfulness. Um, we just take an inventory of things that we're thankful for. And so we wanted to do that for 2021. And so we're going to get into just a short list of things that you're going to get a chance to share some of what you're thankful for in terms of God's work in your life and in your and the lives of those around you in 2021. Um, and then I'm going to share a few thoughts as well. But we wanted to start off with the question, why is Thanksgiving so important? Not so much the holiday, yeah. but the practice of giving God thanks. So let's start there. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so this year, uh, this topic actually has been really big for me. Um, one of my goals for this year was to start memorizing some chapters in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And one of them was Philippians 4. And um, I got myself down to verses 6 and 7. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by yeah. prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Right. And... I'll just stop there because I pretty much stopped there. I didn't, I did finish the whole chapter, but it really um, was super impactful on my, maybe just my whole year of this idea uh, and dichotomy of when we're anxious, when we are struggling, how important Thanksgiving really is. Um, and I actually had a friend um, bring science into it. And she said that they've actually figured out that, um, if you're having anxiety, depression, like mental struggles that they've been able to scientifically see that when you start like saying things that you're thankful for, that they can right. actually see the chemicals in your brain change. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. There's, there's some other things I've heard that are, are related to that. So that makes total sense to me that, um, yeah. And it, and it actually fits with that verse that you were referencing in yeah. Philippians, because the end result of all that is that the peace of God 
will guard right. your hearts, hearts and your and minds. Mind, and I exactly. always thought that that's very interesting that he didn't just say the yeah. peace of God will, will guard your life. Yeah. But specifically mm -hmm. what we really need guarded are our hearts and our, and minds. our minds. Yeah. yeah. Because I think sometimes as believers, we can, um, you know, our heart is in the right place, but sometimes mm -hmm. our mind has a little right. bit harder time catching up. Um, and yeah. that was definitely a, uh, a theme in my life this year. And so mm -hmm. Thanksgiving actually played a huge, huge role, um, mm -hmm. of having to be super intentional about my Thanksgiving, like actually pausing and saying, okay, think of things you can be thankful for right now. Um, like three or four right this minute. And, um, it was really a practice and a discipline. I had never seen Thanksgiving as being a discipline until 2021. Um, at least yeah. that I can remember if I have in the past, I'd forgotten about it, but, um, so I really think, um, Thanksgiving is something that is not just a suggestion in the word, but is truly something that right. needs to be a part of our, our walk with, with the Lord. Man, I, I agree with that so much. And part of, part of what I hear you saying is the act of giving thanks is beneficial to us. So it's, yeah. it's kind of a, of course, it's, it's something that we're offering to God. Um, there's a great verse in Hebrews 13 that talks about offering a sacrifice of praise to God. Oh, that yes. is the fruit of lips yeah. that give thanks to him. And so giving thanks, God gets something out of it. There's that, the, the scriptures describe our giving thanks as a sacrifice. Uh, mm -hmm. when, when our lips give thanks to his name, um, God enjoys it, but it's also beneficial to us. So it's a win-win. And I really like how you emphasize the, the, I guess you would say the emotional and, and mental mm. uh, benefit that, that we get out of giving thanks. And so, you know, giving thanks is actually a gift that God has made available to us, mm -hmm. but you're right. It's not something that always comes naturally to us. So we, we do have to see it as a, also a command to be obeyed, yes. um, a choice to be made, a discipline to be cultivated. Mm. Yeah. And we see that through scripture too. Um, I, I think last year when we did this particular podcast, I'll have to go back and see. I, I'm pretty sure I talked about the Ebenezer stone um, mm. because that was something that God asked um, them to, or Samuel to put up. And it was right. kind of like, you know, the Lord has helped us thus far. Um, but even in my own quiet time, just a few weeks ago, I was reading about in Joshua about them picking up the stones as they crossed the Jordan and they had these 12 stones raised up. And that too was this reminder of what God had done and, and mm -hmm. kind of a, a monument of Thanksgiving for what deliverance the Lord had brought them through. And in both of those situations, God told them to do it. Like he mm -hmm. knows that we're not necessarily going to be great about one remembering <laughs> and right. two even taking that time to, to really think about what God has done and be thankful in that. So I thought yeah. that was really, I had never really thought about that before, that it was something God said, Oh, and PS grab some stones, stack them up, you know, like right. he, he really wanted them to do that and showed them how to do it. I, I was reading this morning in uh, Psalm 18 and it really fits with what we're talking about today. Um, Psalm 18 is a Psalm of Thanksgiving. Uh, written by King David. And he, it's also the same chapter, the same text as you find in second Samuel 22. So that was, this was a pretty important prayer. Mm. Uh, that's one thing that I understand about the scriptures is that if something is, is recounted or found in multiple places, it, I pay yeah. a little more attention to it. Uh, mm -hmm. And so Jesus, there are four gospels that recount for us, the life and teachings of Jesus. I think that's because repetition, um, communicates importance. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in the, in the Hebrew, um, mindset or language, you know, you wouldn't have holy, holy, or holy. Yes. You would have holy, 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 holy. <laughs> so the repetition communicates, um, yeah. a, a, an importance. And so God is holy, holy, holy. And in the same way, when you find passages in multiple places, I think it's, it's just, um, um, 
it's a flag to pay a little extra attention. But one thing I liked about Psalm 18 is, and, and this fits in with my understanding of why Thanksgiving is important, is because the life of David is almost presented as uh, a dance of, of faith. And in Psalm 18, he is, he is recounting and he is reciting um, how God has come through for him in his difficult times. And it's a, it's a really amazing Psalm. Um, the language is, is so um, poetic. It talks about um, David's in trouble and he prays to God. He calls out to God and, and God hears from heaven and, and he bends the heavens and comes down and he's shaking the earth on behalf of David. Um, but at the end, all of that results in David saying, therefore, therefore, I will give thanks to you among the nations, Lord, and I will sing praises about your name. Mm. And so I I like how David, he had this life of faith and he was going through these real struggles as, as he went through his life, but he was, he was calling on God. God was, was answering him. And then that was resulting in him writing this, this Psalm of Thanksgiving and declaring God's goodness and thanking God among the nations publicly. Um, mm. And I guess the flip side of this, as I was as I was reflecting on it earlier was in Romans one where Romans one is not uh, it, it's a tough chapter to read because you really see the, the, the descent and the degradation of mankind's yeah. morality. Yeah. They kind of start out in a good place. And by the end of the chapter um, they have incurred God's wrath. And that's really what the whole end of Romans one is about is, is why mankind deserves God's wrath. Mm -hmm. But if you trace it back to the fork in the road, like where did men go wrong? I think you could point to verse 21. So Romans 1 21 says this, it says that even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. Mm. Instead, they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. And the idea that this whole descent, this domino of mm. going from bad to worse for mankind started with a refusal to give God thanks. Wow. So it really impresses upon me that Thanksgiving, of course, it's a great opportunity for us because we've got this holiday, but really it's important for us to cultivate that discipline mm -hmm. of thankfulness because when we're not thankful, when we don't take the time to reflect and then recite back mm -hmm. the ways that we've seen God come through that we're grateful for, I think we, to the same maybe to a less degree, but we start down the same path that is not a good path for us to walk. So, okay. So we, we're going to go ahead and dive into. That was really good. I was, <laughs> you're preaching. That was great. Yeah. So we're going to get a chance to practice a little bit of this uh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> so Abby, we've both sort of thought through this past year and where we've seen God come through. So what would you want to thank him for? Oh man, mine's rough. But it's been a rough year. Um, I I went through my journals. I was like, I would, and I were like really prepared for this. And uh, the you know what stuck out to me was Job one twenty one, which is real rough too. Um, but basically, the idea and but fits so well with what you were just saying. Um, you know, that's where Job says, "The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord." And this year has really been about the Lord taking things away. Um, and it's been very good in the end because the Lord has been faithful and all of that taking away. Um, but it's also been very hard. And I was encouraged going back through my journals because there was so much of me just being like, really God, like, can't you just fix this or make this better? And, um, and usually it got worse instead <laughs> <laughs> um, but looking back on it, you know, I really was able to learn so much about God's faithfulness and our real need for him. And that's kind of what you were just saying. Mm -hmm. Whenever we forget or we're like, man, things are just great. And I got this all under control. Um, you know, that's when my, my faith starts to slip. That's when my relationship with the Lord starts to slip. And this year was all about um, the Lord showing me just how much I needed him. 
Um, so we, you know, lost my father-in-law this year. I lost um, a significant amount of relationships this year. Um, so it was not great in mm. um, a lot of ways, but through all that, God used it to just really reveal areas of my life that needed more work, mm. which is a huge praise. Um, yeah. Cause I'm happy to say even here on my birthday, when I'm very old now <laughs> that, um, that there's still so much for me to learn about my sin and like the things yeah. I need to work on. And hmm. so it's been really a very um, good growing year. Um, and like, probably not what you wanted me to bring to the table on a Thanksgiving episode, but it's the truth. And, uh, <laughs> so there you go. Um, there was some like very, I think probably the most exciting thing to see was my daughter got baptized this year. Mm -hmm. And so that was really, really cool. And probably the yeah. highlight of my year was right. um, getting to baptize my daughter with, with Brett. That so. is awesome. And, uh, I think we had, uh, didn't we have a blog about that? Didn't you write an article about, um, I, know um, I use a... the picture. I use the picture. Okay. It was, I did a, so, an article on discipling our children, yeah. like at, at the start of yeah. summer. Um, and right. she had just gotten baptized in May. And so I used the picture because <clears throat> yeah. I was really excited about it. <laughs> well, I'm laughing a little bit because the second thing on my list is that we get to learn and grow. And I, I <laughs> and that's basically because, um, I also feel like there's been a lot of that in my, my life this year. So I won't go in. Well, in depth and on so that maybe one, so. we needed to bring that, like maybe our audience yeah. has also not had a great year. Right. In which right. Case we're with you. Yeah. I've been reflecting about how so much of what God wants to teach us, I believe, isn't so much in the ultimate uh, yes or no of his, his answers to our prayers and our desires and our goals. Um, but a lot, a lot of it comes down to timing. And so thinking about Lazarus, thinking about Abraham, I, I just read the life of Abraham in my morning devotions. And so much of what he was teaching Abraham, it seems to me, was built into the timing of when God was going to, to act on Abraham's behalf. And, and so <laughs> I'm trying to keep that in mind because I, I do sense the Lord is doing something similar in my own life, that there are, there are disappointments that I have that have happened this year, not so much because God has said a definitive no, mm. but because some of the things that I was hoping for maybe haven't happened yet. Maybe they won't happen at all. Um, but I guess in the space or in the vacuum of those things not happening there, like you were sharing so many lessons and opportunities to grow. Mm. And so it isn't that God is absent, that that isn't the, um, the experience that I've had this year, but learning through the disappointments that God does allow us to, to go through is something that I, I do want to be thankful for that things haven't played out the way that I wanted or expected or hoped. And yet I can look and see that in that space where things didn't happen the way I wanted, uh, I can see God at work <laughs> in teaching lessons and, and helping me grow. So I am 100% on board your number one thankful thing is my number two. So okay. <laughs> yeah, we kind of covered that, but um, yeah, I'll go ahead and share my second, which was my number one. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and that is God's presence on the journey. Uh, I'm very grateful. This year has felt like um, a, a transitory chapter in my life. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know what it's transitioning to. And maybe it's not even transitioning. Maybe it's just a, a delayed <laughs> Uh, but it's felt like it's mm -hmm. very transitory and others may feel the way I do. That's not always a comfortable place to be when you're, when you're in between two known experiences and realities and you're sort of um, <laughs> in that, that space where you don't, you're not sure, you don't think it's always going to be this way, um, but it is yeah. the reality for you right now. Um, again, reading this morning in Genesis one about the life of Joseph and the end of chapter towards the end of chapter 39, Joseph has been doing great, even though he had been sold into slavery. Um, and then the bottom drops out again and he finds himself in prison, falsely accused. And verse 20 says, so Joseph was there in prison. So that's sort of the, the finale of, uh, Yep. Yeah. This is how that particular chapter ended. So Joseph was there in prison, but verse 21 says, but the Lord was with Joseph. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I, man, that was so um, encouraging mm-hmm. to me that even though Joseph, if he looked at his situation, if he looked at his immediate surroundings, he would have every reason <laughs> to be um, disappointed, uh, discouraged. Um, and yet the Lord's presence was with him and that, that meant everything. So yes, he's in prison, but in prison, the, the Lord was with him, which Mm -hmm. I thought was, um, just a really cool, um, truth for us to hang on to that regardless of where you're at in your circumstances, if -hmm. God is with you in those circumstances, then that's the main thing. And we can be, we can be grateful for that. So that's, that's the number one thing that I I think I'm thankful for in 2021 is I really have sensed the Lord's presence with me, even though the externals aren't necessarily what I would want them to be. So your, your first one was even a little bit like, yeah, we boy, we're just over here (laughs) really (laughs) getting ready to get out of 2021. (laughs) If I had one word for 2021, it would be disruption. Oh, that's yeah. my word for 2021 as I approach the end of it. And a lot of that disruption yeah. has been good. I became a grandfather this year. Yeah, um, we had cool. uh, my, my son just got married um, yeah. a couple weeks ago. So yeah, disruption is not always a bad thing. It's often a very good thing. And yet there's just this churning and this yes. upheaval that 2021 has represented for us uh, yeah. in our life. Yeah, I think mine would be a loss of control, which also sounds negative, <laughs> but is also really good because yeah. I would say about halfway through the year, God really pointed out to me how controlling I am and just like, right. just wanting to have control, like feeling if I, if I lost it, that it was like a real bad situation. And so yes. just, um, having, um, I, one of the, if anyone that I disciple or is in my life at all knows that my, my joke phrase is always Jesus, take the wheel, like with my kids <laughs> and stuff. I'm always like, Jesus, take the wheel. Um, but like, literally, I feel like that happened this year. It was like, Jesus just like shoved me off of that wheel was like, I'm taking over as he should, he should have already been driving. And it's just embarrassing that he wasn't already there. So, right. so it's cool yeah. and good, but uncomfortable for me. I love that. I love that. Well, we probably got time for one more. Abby, do you have one more that you want to share? Yeah. So I am so thankful for the body of Christ this year. Um, They really um, came through. (laughs) Um, And not that that is surprising at all, but just what a beautiful thing the body of Christ is. Um, Both getting to walk through incredibly difficult things with, um, with sisters who are just going through hard things. It's actually a privilege and a, and a joy to be able to pray with others as they walk through hard things and to see them be faithful in such hard situations and to not lose, lose sight of Jesus, um, encourage my spirit a lot this year, just seeing, um, friends also get faced with, um, you know, having to wait longer or faced with disappointment and grief and all the things just, um, seeing them walk through it was incredible, like boosting to my faith. Um, and then when my own little faith was, uh, shaken up, um, I just really had incredible, incredible brothers and sisters in Christ speak into me and, and help me. So I, boy, this year, like never before. Am I so, so grateful for our church family, just for those who are even far off places, like my, my texting buddies, um, who just have really been a gift and balm from the Lord balm as in B A L M not B O M B. (laughs) But, um, yeah, it's just been a really, a huge gift this year. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, we would like to hear from you guys. What are some of the things that you're thankful for? And if you haven't already done this, I would encourage you to take 30 minutes. It doesn't take a lot of time to go to a quiet place, uh, remove the distractions, your phone, um, you know, other, other things that could be distracting your mind and then recount. What are the things that you've seen God do in 2021? What are you thankful for? And maybe share that with us here on the YouTube channel in the comments or share it over on Instagram 
we'd love to hear from you guys how God has been active in your lives and and what you're thankful for. Yeah. All right. Um, so for our faith and culture segment, um, we just wanted to talk about the end of the year since this is our end show, but also um, we just felt like the craziness of 2020 really upped the ante in 2021. And it seems like some of the abnormality of 2020 just pushed on into 2021, but made things busier and crazier and pretty much everyone we know um, feels that pressure. So we wanted to talk about how we as believers can really finish the year strong in our faith in the midst of the demands that the end of a year yeah. seems to bring. So we want to get into that. We <laughs> Hopefully do. give some encouragement. One thought I have on this is it's sort of a cliche that when you get to that stretch of the calendar between Thanksgiving and Christmas, Every, you get into this hustle and bustle. I mean, Hollywood has made movies about this since the black and white days about how <laughs> yeah. we can get so busy during the holiday season that we don't really appreciate and live what's most important about what this, this holiday season is representing with mm -hmm. God sending his son, Jesus, the Messiah into the world. So yeah, the, the tendency for us to get very busy and to get caught up in the hustle and bustle in the last month of the, the, the year is something we're all familiar with. But Abigail, what stands out to me, and I think this is true, in recent years, that hustle and bustle has moved into our heads. There's mm, so much going on good. in our minds mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're pulled in so many directions, whether it's through social media or notifications or, or whatever it is, the, 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 news, the news cycle that's just re relentless. This is a real challenge that we wanted to talk about in faith and culture. It certainly does not only um, affect us as believers, I think our whole society is being influenced by this. Yeah, I agree. I was, um, I was telling Brett uh, just a few days ago that this year feels really different for me because mm -hmm. I am really working on my anxiety and mm -hmm. in doing so you want to know the weirdest thing, Andrew. So I am, I love ch changing holidays. Um, in fact, I think we had an outtake in one, a recent episode where it was like, for me, changing out decoration is the only way we know like what right. season it is. So I'm always like on top of it of like, it is now a new season. Let me bring in the pumpkins <laughs> or, you know, let me bring in the Christmas tree. And, uh, and I'm like, I've always been that way. And this year, like really trying to work on my anxiety and work on that area of my life. I've been weirdly like, like, Oh, I guess it's time to put up you know, the Christmas decorations, or I guess Thanksgiving's coming up. I should make a list of the food we need. And I've always been like making 50 lists. So it's been really interesting. And I yeah. was saying like, is this a problem? He's like, are we going to still have Thanksgiving? I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I got, <laughs> so I got is, the stuff, Brett's a little you know? worried. No, he wasn't worried. Oh, uh, he it. was really speaking into him, like, don't worry about it. He was like, oh, it's it, still going to happen. Right. And so you so were worried. Is this, I was happen? worried. Got it. I yeah. was worried that it was like weird that I no longer had made 15 lists. This wasn't your normal operating. And he was procedure. saying, maybe we didn't need 15 lists. <laughs> maybe that was just you being crazy. <laughs> he didn't say those words, but I could see it in his eyes. All that to say, how can we combat what the world is throwing at us? That is the way to deal yeah. with the season, which I, right, and for right. me was to add 15 other things, which makes yes. no sense, but that's what I did. So well, one thing that we want to talk about today, and we've got maybe three or four minutes here. Okay. So we'll be quick. Let's talk about Advent. That's something we've done mm -hmm. the last few years with our community, our mm -hmm. ITH community. And if people are listening or watching that haven't been part of that in years past, why is Advent such a big deal to us? And what do we have coming up that they can participate in that may help them step away from the busyness, both on the outside and that anxiety, that, that churning that many yeah. of us feel on the inside. Yeah. Um, so it is adding something into our lives, but hopefully something that will keep us focused on Christ, on his birth and his coming and his second coming, all the things we really do want to put emphasis on. Um, so for us, it starts the last Sunday in 
November, which is the right. 28th this year, I believe. This and Sunday. yeah, this Sunday. So get ready, everybody. And don't worry if you're not ready, we're ready for you. So right. um, this year we're actually opening up our Advent um, material for all of you. Um, and it'll be on our YouTube channel. Um, we have a whole little folder that's um, titled ITH Advent. And you can go and it has every single day of Advent just ready and waiting for you. Um, the videos are like three minutes long tops. Some are way shorter than that. And it just gives you a Bible reading and some questions to ask yourself. Um, and then just a short video of just our thoughts on Advent, um, and what God is speaking to us in this season, just to help us center and stay focused on what Mm -hmm. is truly important. Probably all my lists are not one of the things. So, um, so instead of having 15 lists, instead, we can really focus on scripture and just the encouragement that the Lord has for us at the end of the year. Yeah, it's a great resource. It is something that we've provided in the past on a limited basis, but we'll have a a link to that playlist in the show notes for this podcast episode, or if you're watching on YouTube, it'll be in the description below. Mm -hmm. And we would definitely encourage people to take advantage of that. I like the way you phrased it as keeping us centered. Mm -hmm. So even though it is something that you're going to be doing on a daily basis between Thanksgiving and Christmas, it really helps you um, put the other things in perspective. A lot of things are going to happen over the the next four weeks, but Advent has been such a a blessing in my own life Mm -hmm. to help me, like you say, stay centered on what, what really matters and, and really be present in this particular season um, and celebrate what, what it is that God has done, what it means. Yeah. I, I really love it because it does help me. Um, cause my mind does get kind of out of control and, um, at this time of year and spiraling a little bit. And so it's really helped center and ground me over the years. And so I think, um, if you haven't ever t- done it before, this might be your year. Um, we're just releasing all the videos all at once. Um, we know sometimes you are like miss a day. You we're just going to give them to you all so that you Mm -hmm. can get them at your leisure and at whatever time of day you want to, to focus on, on that. So we hope you'll enjoy it and let us know what you think. Um, leave us comments, uh, leave us your answers to your questions. Cause we do ask a few, like think about Mm -hmm. it questions. And we would love to hear from you as we head into the Christmas season. Well, another season in the books for our show, Abigail, who would have thought (laughs) four years ago that uh, we'd be here, but I really appreciate you. I know this has been a a crazy year for both of our families, a lot of good things, a lot of changes, but uh, doing the shows has been a big part of keeping me encouraged and getting a chance to share where I see God at work. So we'll be back in January and uh, yeah, yeah, until then. Yeah, we'll see you guys next year.